Let's talk about 3D printed supports and how to get them on and off your prints a little bit easier. We've all had this happen. We 3D print something amazing and then pulling the supports off can be kind of a pain and you have all this extra stuff left over. You can see here, it's just not coming off clean and this is using the default settings in Prusa Slicer. <clears throat> These are tough. <sighs> now I sat here trying to figure out a way to explain how 3D printing supports actually work. And I think the easiest way to describe it is by using Lego. As a 3D printer prints, all you're doing is taking the filament and laying it down on the build plate layer by layer the exact same way you would build something with Lego bricks. So when do you actually need supports? Simply put, if the layer that you're printing doesn't extend too far beyond the layer below it, you can simply print it without the use of supports. And as you can see, it'll print just fine. It's structurally sound and it's nice and simple. But what if on the other hand, you need to bridge a longer distance like this? And in this case, you simply cannot physically print that layer without a support underneath it. And this is the entire purpose of 3D printed supports. Then we'll do that exact same layer, but with supports underneath it. Lego to the rescue again. We're gonna put a couple of 3D printed supports in between this area that we needed to bridge. And now, as you can see, when the 3D print head comes through here and it lays down filament, it's able to do so with no problem. And now the subsequent layers above can be 3D printed. And you have this nice strong model. And that's all easy enough, but the real difficulty comes when you pull this off of the print bed and you try to remove those supports. Sometimes those supports can be so difficult to get off of here, that you can actually break the 3D print. The other problem is you can be left behind with scarring or the 3D printed supports actually get stuck to the material itself. It's incredibly difficult to pull this material off. And so you end up with all of this scarring and extra material stuck to the bottom that realistically, you're not gonna be able to get off. Fortunately, there are some settings you can adjust that make this so much easier. The first one we'll talk about is top contact Z distance. So if you think about this, the Z axis is the vertical up and down axis. And so all this means is the contact between the top of the support and the bottom of the next layer that's gonna be printed on top of it. So if we have this all the way flush, like it would be with default settings, that's gonna be pretty difficult to remove because there's a lot of tension, there's a lot of connective tissue in between these two pieces. But if on the other hand, we have a little bit of Z distance in between them, it's gonna be much easier to remove. As a starting point, I like to go about double the layer height as the Z contact distance. So if you're printing 0.2 millimeter layers, start with 0.4 for your Z contact distance. The next thing you could do is actually add support interface layers. Instead of having this nice little nub that fits perfectly into the layer above it, it kind of disrupts that by adding an extra layer pattern that goes in the opposite direction on top. Now you can see this layer won't fit directly into the layer above it. And so what ends up happening is it still provides the level of support that you need, but it doesn't stick as easily as it would have before. So between this and the contact Z distance, you can make supports that honestly, when you pull the print off of the print bed, Sometimes they'll detach and fall off right there. Otherwise, they can be really easy to get off after the fact as well. Now, the spacing in between these interface layers can be adjusted with something called the interface pattern spacing. I like to start with about 0.2 or 0.3, similar to the layer height that I'm using. The wider you go, the less material there is that's gonna be actually interfacing or touching the layer above. And sometimes the easier it is to remove the prints. And then we have pattern spacing. This is a space in between the supports on the build plate. So you can see a very dense pattern spacing would be like this where they're almost touching each other. If you go a little bit wider, you can do something like this. Now the 3D printer can still bridge over this with no problem, but you're gonna save about a third of your filament. 
So if you have a project that's gonna need a lot of supports, you can get away with a little bit wider pattern spacing there to save some filament, save some time, and make the print just a little bit faster. Now, mentioning all of that without one more statement would be kind of missing a big point as well. The best supports for your 3D print are no supports. And there's a different way we could have printed this 3D print. Instead of printing this object vertically like this, where you know that you're gonna have this bridging area in between that needs a support, what I would do instead is use the place on face setting in your slicer and simply reorient the model like this. Now by laying it on its side like this, the FDM printer can add all of these layers one after the other vertically and you don't need any supports. And that's gonna cut down on your print time, your filament usage, your expense, and a little bit of headache and hassle at the very end of the print. And if all goes well, you're gonna have a 3D print like this where all of the supports come off nice and easily there's no scarring and your 3D print looks amazing. Not like this, that's the goal. Down in the description below, I'm gonna have all of my settings that I tend to use. Hit me up in the comments if you have anything you'd like to ask me whatsoever. I'm always here to help. Thank you all so much. I love the 3D printing community and I hope you'll subscribe so that we can stay in touch some more. We'll see you next time. Thank you.